Canadian Real Estate versus Little European Castles, Part 21. Today's property was sent in by Gina, who is a longtime viewer and secret source for some of my videos. This is 60 Glendale Avenue in Toronto, Ontario, and this is the actual cover image that they picked for the listing. Not a great sign. Here's another angle of the house. You can see that the windows are made of uh, wood. Interesting choice. You've also got a garage at the back, as you can see here. Here's your driveway, which seems like it'll be super fun to back out of every day. Especially because you get to share it with your neighbor. And here's a close-up of the garage roof where you can see you can probably use a couple of new shingles here and there. Now normally, this is the part of the video where I would say, let's take a look inside. But unfortunately, with this property, no access to the interior will be granted due to the mold and asbestos. Which I'm sure will lead many of you to say that this is a perfect development property on this 27 by 90 foot lot. And obviously I checked the zoning on this one, so it's regular residential zoning with a floor space ratio of 0.6. Not that good. That means after you're done tearing down this house, which is so full of mold and asbestos that you can't even go inside, you could build a home of up to 1,458 square feet. Not tiny, but not exactly a palace or a condo development either. I always check this information, but a lot of people in the comments section seem to think that I'm totally unaware of it, so I'm telling you up front this time. So what'll it cost you to live here? Only $930,000. That's fair. On the other hand, if you feel like you need to save a couple hundred thousand dollars, you'll have to settle for the castle in France instead. This castle, situated on over 12 acres of woodland, dates from the end of the 19th century and features over 5,000 square feet of living space with 13 bedrooms and 3,000 additional square feet of outbuildings. Many characteristic elements of the castle are preserved, including the towers, the high ceilings, fireplaces, parquet floors, a central staircase, and moldings, the decorative kind, not the actual mold kind like in Toronto. The castle was renovated in the 1980s and 90s. Today, the castle and outbuildings are divided into four separate dwellings, creating the opportunity for a variety of uses, such as a bed and breakfast, event space, or if you've been considering that French castle commune with you and your friends, this could be your chance. So, what's your pick? The house in Toronto that's so filled with mold and asbestos that you aren't allowed to go inside because it's too dangerous to your health, or the castle? Let me know in the comments. And if you're really determined to miss the point of what I'm doing, and you think the house in Toronto is still a better deal, then please, please comment and talk to us about it, because it's very funny for me and the other people who watch these videos.